Hey, Steve here. Okay, today I want to talk to you about why I think that if I can do it, you can do it. Now, there's nothing special about me. I am not a genius. I am not a math wizard. I'm not an accounting wizard. Um, you don't have to be a math wizard to be really good at bookkeeping. Um, but let me get, I, <clears throat> you've probably heard me say before, if I can do it, you can do it. And so I want to explain that in more detail. I won't give you my whole life story, but I'll give you the, the, the things that in my life that uh, lead me to believe that if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, so when I finished high school, I went to three different colleges in three semesters. That's how lost I was. I was just mentally lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know where I wanted to go to school. I initially went to one school. All my friends were going to another school. So the second semester I went to the school they were going to. We partied too much. Then we disbanded kind of. A couple of us went to another school. Still partied too much. I was partying too much. And then um, I went on to, uh, from there I was just really lost. I didn't know one, how I was gonna get through college. I didn't know um, what I was wanted to be. Um, and I did, had a couple of buddies going into the Marines. I thought, let's just do that. Maybe that'll straighten me out. It wasn't out of some pride for the country. I'll, I do have pride for the country, but it wasn't, I didn't, wasn't doing it for these big noble reasons. I was doing it because I was lost. And I found out that a lot of people that I was in there with were in the same situation in life. They're lost. <clears throat> and they do that for, um, not all of them, a lot of people do go into uh, the service for uh, patriotic reasons. But I, um, be honest, and I think a huge percentage of people that do go into the military are just lost young kids like, like I was. And, um, and looking for something to straighten us out or teach us about the world and get some experience about the world. And it does do that. So anyways, I, so I did that. I went into the Marines. Uh, so after three semesters of college, I went in the Marines. After the Marines, I was still lost. I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. I screwed around for a couple years. I lived in Boulder, Colorado. I lived in Tucson, Arizona. Um, then I finally <clears throat> said, I think I was 26, uh, I said to myself, I have to you know, figure something out. I moved back to Illinois. Moved in with my parents, went to a junior college for two years, studying accounting. Uh, after two years of that, I went in, on to a four-year college, Illinois State University, and uh, was had my own apartment by that time, and graduated uh, after two years, two more years of that, my junior and senior year, and then I went into a uh, staff accountant position right there in town in uh, Bloomington, Illinois. <laughs> so this whole time though, I was always, you know, I, w I was always my worst enemy. I really was. I was always still kind of lost. I was always partying too much. I was, uh, wasn't growing up, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so here I am as a staff accountant for three years and uh, the, and hating every moment of my life. I hated getting up in the morning to go sit in the cubicle all day to come home for a few hours before I go to bed and start the whole thing over. And I hated the weekends because I hate, you know, I loved Friday and part of Saturday, Sunday I hated because I knew I was going back to work on Monday. And it was just a miserable life. And I was depressed. Um, looking back on it, I knew, I knew I was depressed. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. I had a degree in accounting. I had passed the CPA exam. Um, you know, I had these supposed achievements that were supposed to put me on the path to happiness, but they, they, weren't, they, they weren't doing that. Um, so that's when I decided to move out to California with nothing. I had, I had absolutely nothing. I had uh, a car that wasn't fully paid off. And I had a, maybe two thousand dollars to my name, and I moved out with a buddy. And we're moving from rural Illinois, which I had a house in a, in Illinois that cost me five hundred dollars a month. It was a full house, yard, big big old yard, garage, everything. Uh, 
for five hundred dollars a month was my mortgage payment. I sold it. I sold it to move out to California, and um, <clears throat> I get out to California with my buddy, and we said, "Listen, we're going to go to the beach and live on the beach, or live, you know, right next to the beach." We find this really bad place. They wanted twelve hundred dollars a month. This is in two thousand three, I believe. They wanted twelve hundred twelve hundred dollars a month to um, to stay there, and it was literally one room with a little kitchen, and that was it. Uh, but it was right on the beach, and we and the carpet was. They weren't even going to clean the carpet. The carpet was, you know, destroyed. And I had I broke out into a full sweat, just a panic of what have I gotten myself into. So me and my buddy, um, who felt the same way, was like, oh crap, because <laughs> we had very little, little amount of money. We had no idea, uh, you know, how what the cost of living was out here on the coast, and we did zero homework basically. Uh, we were actually sitting in a bar in Illinois and said we got to get out of here. Which way, which way do you want to go? To, it's Florida or San Diego? And I could, I really could care less at that time. Could have cared less. And uh, my buddy goes, let's just go to California. Because yeah, I'd been out here in the, for the Marines before. So part of me wanted to go to Cal, uh, Florida because it was different. But then I also knew that it was nicer out here or nice out here. So, uh, so my buddy said San Diego when we ended up out here. Uh, saw that place for twelve hundred dollars. Realized that we can't do that. First of all, we don't want to be living in the same room, and uh, can't. And we couldn't afford it. it. Just we didn't know how we would be able to afford such such a thing. So, uh, with no job, we, neither of us had a job. That's certain very little money. So we uh, went back to our friend's place in Arizona for like a month. We just hung out there, partied, and. Uh, tried to av avoid reality <laughs> for a while and finally we got on the internet at the time which was you know we go to some place and try to look up something on the internet we didn't even know what we were doing this is 2003 and um, trying to find a place to live in California so by but by this time we got the word that if you're gonna move into Cal into San Diego area there are certain areas that are easier to get into they're less expensive and you're still on the coast, and that place is called Oceanside. It's on the north side of San Diego County. So we, so we jump in a car, boom back to uh, San Diego, find this really slightly better place than the first place that we looked at. And it was tw about 12, if I remember correctly, about $1,200 a month. <clears throat> but it had two rooms and a little kitchen in between. So he had his room, I had my room, and then there's this little kitchen. It was a dive. And we had people on each side of us who were crazy, literally crazy drug addicts, I think. And uh, So it was uh, very interesting times. We, made, we lasted there five months, and then, I, then we moved down to the city that's quite just south of that, called Carlsbad, which was a huge step up. Um, but anyways, throughout this whole time, I. I have no clients. I'm living in fear. Um, I have no idea what I'm, how I'm going to make it, how I'm going to survive. <clears throat> I start throughout this process. I'm trying to find some kind of work, of, uh, bookkeeping work, but I, I didn't even know QuickBooks at the time. Uh, I saw this place that uh, was doing taxes. I went in there and see if I could do. Ta I'd never done taxes before. And I said, uh, but I had, you know, my CPA, and I was so I was trying to uh, leverage that. And the guy, the guy was really nice. The owner, he was, he was like, you, you can, what you can do is, um, you can review these as they come through. So people would do tax returns, and I had a system where I would just kind of review them, make sure that every place was signed that was supposed to be signed, that kind of thing. And that was just like a foot in the door. Once I started doing that, um, then I, I did that very briefly. Uh, because at the same time I was looking for uh, bookkeeping clients. Actually, I did know a little bit of QuickBooks at that time because I learned it when I was still a staff accountant. Um, I had put together a, a little business with a buddy that didn't go anywhere, and uh, 
I was doing QuickBooks with that, and then, but we were also getting, I also had gotten a couple bookkeeping clients. <clears throat> so the memory's coming back to me. And uh, <clears throat> so then I, uh, so I did have some bookkeeping experience. So I was looking for bookkeeping clients when I was here in California. And I found uh, one that he was looking for somebody that needed somebody to come in for four hours a day, five days a week. Which at the time, I didn't have anything really. Uh, was a gold mine. It was $25 an hour. And I would never do that now. Uh, but back then, it was, um, it was a really good step up for me. So I would go do that for four hours a day every day and then I uh, felt pretty good about myself. <clears throat> but during that time it was allowing me to um, find other bookkeeping clients and w which I did. I found another one that I that would g also go on site for. That was, a go that was a client where I would go on site four hours a day, five days a week. Then I found another uh, client that was uh, little further drive but um, I think she was paying would pay me $35 an hour and uh, it was kind of uh, come in as I wanted it was every day five days a week uh, but I would be able to put in kind of as many hours as I wanted it's a little more flexible and a little more pay <clears throat> so I quit the other job that was $25 an hour and I was doing the $35 an hour job at the same time <clears throat> I'm learning how to pick up clients on the side, other clients, so, and that was happening. So I'm building up these uh, much smaller clients while I was going to this on-site job five days a week and dealing with that craziness. That was a crazy uh, uh, business owner and crazy job, but uh, it was for an ad, an ad agency. Um, but he, um, <clears throat> which uh, half the people didn't sleep, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so you're dealing with kind of wackos. But, um, anyways, so, uh, and then this whole time, I'm still like fresh to California. I'm enjoying California. I'm surfing every day and, uh, you know, kind of trying to live the life, you know, that I always thought I missed out on growing up in Illinois. So I was trying to, I was also being a beach bum at the same time as I was trying to, you know, half effort try to build up this accounting practice. I was just really just trying to get by so that I could enjoy my life. But um, even with all of that, and without getting into all the details of how I um, was my own roadblock, um, my business still grew. I, it just still naturally grew. I, uh, with without cussing on this, I half, you know what, um, attempted at, at growing my practice in the beginning. Um, I was more, I was more interested in, um, going out and having fun and surfing and I live just like two blocks from the beach, um, a good surf spot. And, uh, so I was really just working just enough to get by but I, the reality was I was living in fear. Every single day I was living in fear. I was masking that by, by you know, drinking and partying and, uh, you know, but the reality was I was, I was living in fear. And then the years start ticking by. And, but at the same time, even though I was, you know, my worst enemy, I, the business still grew. It just naturally grows because you naturally meet people um, and if you are, even me, I was semi-actively looking for a new business, I found it. And um, yes, times change, you know, the internet, that was back, when I first started, that was, I was using the newspaper to find uh, ads for people looking for, for business. And um, I was, um, so the internet wasn't, you know, what it is today. It, it's an ever-evolving thing that you just, uh, change change with but um, if I if I can do it with all of that being said I moved out here with nothing I had no clients I had no friends out here I had my one friend that I moved out here with um, and uh, you know I put a lot of roadblocks in my way with just 
uh, you know, trying to live the Southern California life instead of focusing on my business. Um, looking back, I wouldn't change a thing. However, it was, it was stressful times. It was, um, I had a lot of fear, um, and I just covered it up and just kept marching on. But you, it doesn't have to be that bad, you know, like that anymore. I didn't have any, but it, I didn't have the Learn, Start, Grow program, which is what I developed and what I'm selling now uh, for Black Friday sale. And um, I didn't have that. I didn't have somebody say, this is all you do. This is all you got to do. I had to learn all that on my own. I came up with a logo at the time, and looking back at it, it was the cheesiest logo ever. Um, but I had, you know, different logos and different names over time uh, from the from when I first started. And um, but I finally uh, fine tuned things. I my answering um, music when somebody called and my my voicemail music was a Jimi Hendrix song. <laughs> Uh, rainy days, if you if you know what that is. Um, so that kind of tells you where my headspace was at the time, and I still succeeded. Now I went from that, moving out here with next to nothing. I own a I, I own my place here in a beautiful place uh, in uh, North County, San Diego. I own a place in uh, Mammoth um, that I that I use and I rent out. Um, you've seen seen videos of me from there, probably. Um, you know, my kid goes to an excellent school, and we have uh, nice stuff, and you know, everything that we could need, and all of that happened here. It didn't. No, nobody gave me anything. Um, it was all through this sometimes lackluster effort of mine, and sometimes I got serious about it. And uh, I did get, after my son was born 10 years ago, I did get more serious about it. Basically up until when my son was born, from uh, 2003 to 2011, was party time, however my business still grew somehow. And then um, once my son was born, things changed. And I got serious about life and my business and having a future for my son. And that changed everything too. So. The, the long-winded uh, answer to why, you know, why I think other people can do this, if they, it's, it's really just a mindset and you're staying in the game. The only reason I made it is because I didn't try, I didn't go off and do something. I didn't go off and become a waiter instead of working on my bookkeeping business. Even though I was barely, you know, from 2003 to 2011, I was playing more than working, um, it still grew. And um, every year, I would still make more money than the prior year. That's really cool about this business, is that every year you make more and more, way more than you, any kind of raise you could ever get from a real job. Um, and then when you really put effort into it, you can really see some major jumps. So like when my, after my son was born, my, my annual, uh, profit just just leapfrogs it every year so uh, and that's because I'm putting effort into it when before I wasn't so um, anyways that's my message to you today I want I want people to know that if you I was no math genius I picked math because I was better at math than any other subject but you you don't have to be good at math to do to be a good bookkeeper you don't have to be able to add things in your head and do some kind of crazy calculations in your head. You don't have to do any of that. You have to be uh, consistent and I'd say a problem solver. And you know, just you just have to have that determination to stay after it. And even though I lacked, I had more fear than anything when I first started out. Uh, one thing that I did never, one thing that I never did was I I did never stray. Uh, from what I was becoming, which was uh, a bookkeeper. And I, I was also learning to do taxes and stuff, but you don't have to do that. So <clears throat> that's my message to you. If you stay on it, stay pointed in that direction, 
it will actually kind of take care of itself, even if you don't put that much effort into it. But if you do put effort into it, you can really see it take off rather quickly. Um, and then year after year, you're going to see yourself giving, you're basically giving yourself this huge raise every year. And I'm talking uh, $20,000 more one year than the prior year. So some, if, there's going to be times where you have major jumps. And then there's going to be times where uh, you're going to have smaller jumps and stuff like that. But it's a business that naturally grows every single year if you stay, keep your head in the game. Um, and like I said, if I could do it through those beginning years, you could do it. I really believe that. You don't have to be a, a college graduate. You don't have to have an accounting degree. Um, all that stuff I learned in accounting you know, get to get my accounting degree had nothing to do with getting clients, how to talk to clients, had nothing to do about branding, had nothing to do about advertising and marketing. And the, those are the foundational things that you need to, to start and grow a bookkeeping business. You need to have really good branding, use that really good branding to effectively advertise, market, network, and then know how to talk to clients. And all of that is in my program. I learned none of that um, in, uh, in college, none. All that was learned from the streets, <laughs> from the beach. So anyways, I hope that helps those, that you, those of you that think that you need some sort of formal education to, to make this happen. Even though I had a formal education, I, it wasn't an education in what this is. Um, so you can do it if I can if I did it I and I could get into some really all the details but I won't because this is on a uh, this is on an electric uh, electronic uh, data that will never ever go away so I let me leave it at that that I was my worst enemy for a long time no longer thankfully and um if I if I made it through the through all that without any direction whatsoever, you can make it with this with the direction of my program. I I have that guarantee. So if you do everything that I ask you know that I recommend you do and you still don't get clients, I give you your money back. So all right, I wish you the best. I hope you have a great day. Take advantage of this Black uh, Black Friday sale, Cyber Monday sale. They are uh, one and the same. So, but uh, today is Sunday, and tomorrow, Monday, uh, Monday night is when that sale ends. So get on it now. If you're going to be busy tomorrow and you might forget, go ahead and order it today. You'll save 200 bucks, and then it'll be the best price you'll be able to get it for. Will be the full price after today. <clears throat> I mean, after tomorrow. So give it a go. Shoot me up with any questions, Steve at BookkeepingLife.com. I'm always happy to jump on a phone call too. So just hit me up with an email. I'm gonna be with my son all day, um, but I will be around tomorrow. And then tomorrow evening, I'm going to have a uh, live event on YouTube, which you should have received an, e uh, an email for, 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 and I'll send it again uh, tomorrow or with this. And you can um, wait for that. That'll be at 4 p.m. Pacific time and tomorrow that'll be tomorrow cyber Monday where you can jump on the YouTube and you can type in any questions you have and I'll answer those live um, so anyways think about it all let me know if you have any questions if I can do it you can do it because I'm here to help all right have a good day take care